Ooh! What's that we see here? A whole house filter, and we're starting with the after shot. That's right, this channel's always evolving, and today we're gonna learn how to install a whole house water filter. And what we're looking at is the iSpring WGB 22B2 stage whole house water filter, along with the iSpring WSP 50 SL sediment filter, both of which I have linked to in the description. Let's get started. Why don't we pull that uh, foam flavor pack out of the filter and toss it? And I'm fortunate in my situation in that I already have a nice water loop here where my water softener used to be installed. And if you've been following my channel, earlier this year I installed a water softener for the house because it had hard water, but as luck would have it, the city replaced all the pipes like three or four months later, rendering the water softener more or less useless. So instead I sold it and got a whole house filter. And one of the first items on the agenda is going to be drawing us a diagram of what we're going to build. Here we see the nice filter. Um, the purpose of this is simple. This allows us to visualize what we're going to build prior to building it, but it also allows us to kind of create an inventory or bill of materials of the kinds of pipe fittings that we'll need before we venture out to the store. Here we got a ball valve, a T fitting, a pressure gauge. Uh, this is going to be the bypass loop here with a valve. This is vital so that we can service the whole house filter without shutting water off to the whole house. Just a little convenience feature right here. So we got two pressure gauges, the purpose of which will be to tell us if the whole, uh, filter needs to be replaced. That is, you know, either the sediment or the charcoal filter. Because the idea is simply this. As the filters clog up, the house side water pressure should, be, should drop. And a pressure gauge is a great indicator for that. So with the water flowing left to right, let's count all the things we'll need. So we got six elbow joints, three shutoff valves, two pressure gauges, and all the fittings that go together with them. Whatever fittings we'll need for the whole house water filter and a whole bunch of pipe, as well as T fittings. So if you have copper piping like myself, you'll need a one inch MIP to three quarter inch FIP brass bushing. That's for the whole house filter itself. Um, there will be a three-quarter inch male adapter that threads into that. Three-quarter inch ball valve. Must be potable, lead-free. A quarter inch NPT pressure gauge to 100 PSI, two of them. A quarter inch FNPT wrought copper adapter. And then three-quarter inch to quarter inch wrought copper reducing T. Three-quarter inch elbow and three-quarter inch T. A lot of stuff! All of this stuff I'll put into the description. So here's our one inch brass bushing. That's going to thread into the whole house filter. And because I have three quarter inch pipes, I need an adapter and that's where this three quarter inch fitting comes in. This thing is reversible and has threads on both sides. So I'm using the three quarter inch fitting to thread into that. This funny little rod adapter is for the pressure gauge along with the rod reducing T. Here is the ball valve. And again, it has to be lead free. This is how you can tell. And now we're gonna mock everything up. This is called a dry fit. And the reason I'm going to do a dry fit is, again, I'm going to try to follow my blueprint, build it up, see if anything about it doesn't make sense. And I will also go through and make sure that once it's all laid out like this, will it actually fit into the space? And I'll also do a Gedunken experiment. I'll follow the flow of the water, like example here in this bypass valve, and make sure that it works as I expect it to. Likewise, when I need to perform maintenance, this is handy. It's got a little valve here that you can use to depressurize the system. So once again, here I have the valve open to the whole house filter. It goes through all of this. Now, if the water tried to go through the bypass, it can't, so long as I've got to shut off. So both use cases work. Here's a measurement, about 48 inches. Then I go to the actual space and I make sure that, yes, indeed, I have 48 inches or more. Good to have wiggle room. The water comes in through this pipe and then goes back up to the rest of this house. So we're going to be basically cutting right here in this little midsection. And here's another thing to consider, flow of the water. Now, this filter here, this pre-filter is reversible. So where the arrow is pointing, that's where the water needs to flow. Likewise, the whole house filter is also reversible, but we have to unfortunately undo these eight bolts, which for some reason they decided to mix metric and imperial units. 
why are these bolts metric? Isn't this how a NASA spacecraft crashed into Mars? So let's hope a similar fate does not await us. Anywho, that's how you reverse the assembly here. You just undo the flange and then rotate the filter housing stuff. From here, I'm actually going to start assembling and soldering and sweating the pipes. So I got my solder, I got my flux or acid etch, brushes, deburring tools, marker, pipe cutter, another pipe deburring tool, and uh, some sandpaper, some thread seal, uh, fire retardant cloth, my favorite torch, and of course, a fire extinguisher nearby. Here we'll start with a three quarter inch fittings going into the pre-sediment filter. Now these don't get soldered, these get threaded in, so I'm using Teflon tape here, I'll wrap it 15 times, and I will also then apply some thread sealant. So uh, basically a two for one here. The idea is that I cannot afford to have this leak because once it's all soldered up, undoing anything will be very, very difficult for me to do. So it basically buys me extra insurance, that thread sealant. Then I'll realize, oops, I'm working backwards. I shouldn't put those uh, fittings into the filter before soldering because otherwise the Teflon tape will melt. So I had to take it apart and I started soldering everything first and then threading it into the pre-filter. I won't go into too much detail on how to solder pipe here because this isn't the video for that. Otherwise we'll be here for another half hour. But the concept is fairly straightforward. Cut your pipe, deburr it, sand it, apply flux, which is acid etchant, apply it to both surfaces. So sand both surfaces and then heat it up and apply a certain amount of solder to the joint. When done, use a wet rag to wipe the acid off because it'll continue corroding the pipe otherwise. Here I've got my first assembly ready to go and basically dry threaded into the whole house filter assembly. And now I'm wisely picking a good place to mount the whole house filter into, making sure that I have enough height to the floor to actually mount the canisters, don't make the mistake. Here I'm using a level to make sure that, well, the, <laughs> the wood that I drill into my studs is level. And I'm gonna use that same trick for the whole house filter housing. I just drill one screw first, I hang the assembly or the housing, and then I use the level to make sure that it's level. Nice. All right, now it's the same deal with this assembly that I made here, and I need to thread it into the filter housing. So about 10 to 15 Teflon windings around the threads of that bushing, and then I use thread sealant on top of that. Um, I twist it into the right position and I just basically just use my own strength. I didn't even need to use a wrench. The next thing I did was I followed the rest of my blueprint. I made this assembly now to the right hand side of the whole house filter. And wouldn't you know it, I made an oopsie. Well, would you look at that? Luckily there is an undo button for copper. So what I'm doing here is I wrapped the uh, the assembly with a wet towel so I can hang on to it. All you have to do is heat the joint up sufficiently and then use a pair of pliers to pry it apart. Don't do this here. The, I made another oopsie where I kept the ball valve shut. Doing so can actually distort the ring, the uh, Teflon ring that's inside of the ball valve. Likewise, another thing to know is that you won't be able to fit the pipe here because, well, there's solder in there, so you have to heat it up to get the solder to flow before putting your new pipe in there and then you just kind of twist it in with a pair of pliers and after we reseal the joint with some fresh solder <clears throat> now it's complete and yes now we exercised big brain time we don't have uh, interference with the ball valve so same exercise 10 to 15 teflon windings plus thread sealer and we twist it into place and here's how we're looking so far not too bad not too shabby Next comes the bypass valve. This is gonna be a little bit trickier because we have to now get some precise measurements in to make sure that it all fits together. So I use two equal length pipes, both on the left and the right, and I'm dry fitting everything here with the idea of the ball valve kind of being nice and centered. And then for the last piece, I insert a pipe that's too long and then I kind of just put a mark on the pipe. Now, see this line here on the fitting? 
that is how deep a pipe will go before it stops, before it meets a stop. That is where I'm judging or how I'm judging where to make an actual cut in the pipe. So now that I've got it all nicely fitted together, I dry fit it one last time, make sure everything goes together nicely. And once again, I go to town and I assemble it now, this time with solder, making it a permanent installation. Here's another good trick for working with copper. If there's a joint you absolutely can't afford to heat up, such as that joint right there with all the Teflon that I don't want to melt, put a wet rag there. That'll wick the heat out of that spot sufficiently enough as to not cause any damage as you're heating up the pipes with a torch. And we're looking pretty good here. This is almost to the home stretch. This is basically the result of day one, except for this imposter right here. That's not solder, get out of here. And now we move to day two of this install. I've given myself the whole day to do this just in case because once you cut into a water pipe, there is no going back. You have to finish the job. Start by draining all the water out of the pipes. There I turned on the faucet in the lowest point of the house and I'm also turning on the faucet at the highest point of the house. And here's why, time for a bit of a physics and draw, drawing diagrams. Okay, so you know how when you put your thumb over a straw fill with water, it stays? And how when you release it, the water goes? That's because the force of the pressure of the air now cancels each other out from top and bottom, and gravity gets to act on the water. Well, in the pipes, we have basically the same scenario. Even if I turn on the water valve in the lowest point of the house, yes, some of the water will drain out, but eventually the air pressure working to keep the water inside the pipes is greater than the gravity acting on the mass of the water. So we have to open the top valve so that air pressure can now cancel each other out from top and bottom and have gravity take over and do the rest of the job. Once you do that and wait some time, like maybe 10 minutes, soon after, it should look something like this, reduces to basically a drip. This, by the way, tells me that my valve is in good working condition and I proceed to actually cutting the pipe open. Again, no going back after this. If you screw up and you can't fix it, best have uh, the rest of the day to call a plumber on an emergency. Have a bucket ready because water will keep coming out of this. Here I'd like to use my wet vac to suck the rest of the water out of the pipes or help me in doing so. And ideally it will stop dripping at some point. But if you're impatient and it keeps doing that, there's a little bit of a trick that I like to use. I'll just attach my wet vac to the nearest faucet and I'll just have this negative air pressure suck water away from the point where I'm trying to solder because water is like the worst enemy when you're trying to solder. Likewise, if there's water trapped in places, I like to use this um, tube and just, I, I suck the water out and then the, the rest of the job is being done by the siphoning effect. I know, yeah, it's big brain time all the time on this channel, 24-7. Here I'm basically preparing the cut and I'm removing any excess pipe. Here's a nice little trick that where you can rotate fittings if you need them to using that same principle where you just heat up the joint to get the solder to flow and then becomes soft enough for you to move fittings around. Now I'm just taking some measurements to determine the height of the pipe I'll have to cut going from the rest of my assembly here and using clever techniques and <laughs> levels to make sure that it's all nice and level. Same thing here as before, just dry fitting, making sure everything goes together, and then we go to town. We solder everything together. A few things to note here. Obviously, if you're too close to something flammable and you need to use a torch, that's where the heat shield or flame retardant cloth comes in. And another thing of note, it's generally a bad idea to leave an, a joint unfinished. So I kind of made an oopsie here, and this lower left corner, I attached pipe and I heated up a joint where stress was being applied, so we'll see what happens later with that. Next up, I employ the same technique for the pressure gauges, so Teflon tape, thread seal, and I just twist it into place with my hands. Now I assemble the rest of the filter, so just screw in the filter housing for the pre-sediment filter. Um, 
And because my IQ is 800, I make sure that I unwrap the actual filters out of their plastic before putting them in. If your water flows left to right, then the sediment filter comes first. Uh, then that is followed up by the charcoal filter as the second stage. There it is, that's the carbon filter or the charcoal filter. The manufacturer says replace the filter every six to 12 months. I hope that pre-sediment filter actually maybe extends the life of those filters, but we'll see. That's why the pressure gauges are so handy. And now moment of truth. Let's turn on the water and see if we have any leaks. You'll want to open the valve slowly as to not shock the system. Gradually open it, let the water fill in, and oh, there it is. There's that oopsie from earlier that I was talking about. But it's a good thing I have all those shutoff valves as well as this um, valve where I can just depressurize the system, get rid of the water. Like I said before, what happened here was I heated up that joint to install another pipe into it, but meanwhile, stress was being applied to the other joint that already existed, and it broke it loose. So I had to redo that joint. Anywho, here's take two. Again, gradually filling it with water and seeing what happens. And from the looks of it, no leaks. We're at full city pressure here at around 48 PSI. No more leaks at that joint, which is nice. But do take your time. Inspect every single joint. Even if it's weeping a little, that'll become a big problem later. So it's better to fix it right now. I pretty much started with all the valves closed at first and then I open them one by one and see what happens so that I can catch a leak if it's there in time and close the valve. In other words, I'm just testing the system piece by piece. I test the bypass, I test the filter itself and then I'll close the bypass valve and only keep the filter valves open and that'll be pretty much the final state that the system spends 99.9% .9 of its time in. Again, I can't stress this enough, be very gentle upon opening these valves. You don't want to shock the system. And it looks like no more leaks! Just kidding, one more leak right here on this ball valve, which luckily isn't that big of a deal. Pretty easy to fix. All we have to do is remove that top nut, which with a 14 millimeter wrench, we get rid of the handle. And that exposes this nut right here, 12 millimeter nut. All we do is tighten it clockwise and that should stop the leak. Sometimes these little buggers tend to jar themselves loose from factory. This is the way it is, but a good thing for a homeowner to know. Reassemble, don't forget the lock washer and tighten that top nut. Now we no longer have any leaks. From here, don't forget to let your water run out of every faucet. It'll get, get rid of both air pockets in the system, as well as any flux or debris that was created while you're working on the pipes. So here we got the system now fully pressurized, and I'm happy to report that there is no difference between the post and the pre-pressure. I'm putting this little tick mark here to let me know where the normal operating pressure is, so that if the needle dips below that, as compared to the pre-gauge, the pre-filter gauge, I'll know, hey, it's time to replace the filters. And that's how you install a whole house water filter. I like to keep all the spare parts and manuals just right there, so I don't forget where they are. And I'm really happy with this, you know. Now there's no more chlorine in the water, no more harsh chemicals. Showering is a joy. <laughs> and a bonus is you can drink out of any faucet. It'll be just as good, if not better, as coming out of a water filter pitcher. All in all, for around $500, $600 total, totally worth it. Fun project. Took about two days. I hope this has been helpful. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time.